from an understanding perspective, there's the Richard Feynman, maybe attributed to him, but maybe many others, is this idea that if you can't explain something simply that you don't understand it. In how many cases, how often is that true? Do you find there's some profound truth in that? Oh, okay. So you were about to ask, is it true? To which I would say flatly no. But then you said, you followed that up with, is there some profound truth in it? And I'm like, yeah. okay, sure. So there's some truth in it. It's but it's not true. true. <laughs> it's just not. Uh, this is, it's that's such truth, a mathematician answer. The truth that is in it <laughs> yeah. is that learning to explain something helps you understand it. Right. Um, but real things are not simple. Yeah. A few things are. Most are not. Um, and I don't, to be honest, I don't, I mean, I don't, we don't really know whether Feynman really said that right or something like that is sort of disputed. But I don't think Feynman could have literally believed that, whether or not he said it. And, you know, he was the kind of guy, I, I, I didn't know him, but I've been reading his writing. He liked to sort of say stuff like stuff that sounded good. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's it totally strikes me as the kind of thing he could have said because he liked the way saying it made him feel but also knowing that he didn't like literally mean it. Well, I, I definitely have so I've, have a lot of friends and I've talked to a lot of physicists and they do derive joy from believing that they can explain stuff simply or believing it's possible to explain stuff simply even when the explanation is not actually that simple. Like I've heard, <laughs> I've heard people think that the explanation is simple and they do the explanation and I think it is simple, but it's not capturing the phenomena that we're discussing. It's capturing, it somehow maps in their mind, but it's it's taking as a starting point, as an assumption that there's a deep knowledge and a deep understanding that's that's actually very complicated. And the simplicity is almost like a almost like a poem about the more complicated thing as opposed to a distillation. And I love poems, but a poem is not an explanation. <laughs> <laughs> well, some people might disagree with that, but certainly from a mathematical perspective. No poet would disagree with it. No poet would disagree. You, you, you don't think there's some things that can only be described imprecisely? As an explanation. I don't think any poem would I don't think any poet would say their poem is an explanation. They might say it's a description. They might say it's sort of capturing sort of Well, some people might say the only truth is like music, right? That the 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 not the only truth, but some truth can only be expressed through art. And I mean, that's the whole thing. We're talking about religion and myth. And there's some things that uh, are limited cognitive capabilities and the tools of mathematics or the tools of physics are, ju are just not going to allow us to capture. Like yeah, it's I possible consciousness is one of those things. It yes, that is definitely possible. But I would even say, look, I mean, consciousness is a thing about which we're still in the dark as to wh whether there's an explanation we would yeah. we would understand it as an explanation at all. By the way, okay, I got to give yet one more amazing Poincaré quote because this guy just never stopped coming out with great <laughs> quotes that, um, you know, Paul Erdős, another fellow who appears in the book, and by the way, he thinks about this notion of distance of like personal affinity, kind of like what you're talking about, the kind of social network and that notion of distance that comes from that. So that's something that Paul er Erdős er er did. Well, he thought about distances and networks. I guess he didn't probably, he didn't think about the social oh, network. Oh, that's fascinating. And that's how it started that story of Erdős number. Um, yeah, okay. But, sorry but, to distract. Um, <laughs> but you know, Erdős was sort of famous for saying, and this is sort of along the lines we were saying, he talked about the book, capital T, capital B, the book. And that's the book where God keeps the right proof of every theorem. So when he saw a proof he really liked, it was like really elegant, really simple. It's like, that's from the book. That's like, you found one of the ones that's in yeah. the book. Um, he wasn't a religious guy, by the way. He, he referred to God as the supreme fascist. He was like, uh, but somehow he was like, I don't really believe in God, but I believe in God's book. I mean, it was, a, um, yeah. um, <laughs> but Poincaré on the other hand, um, and by the way, there are other, Hilda Hudson is one who comes up in this book. She also kind of saw math, um, She's one of the people who sort of develops um, the disease model that we now use, that we use to sort of track pandemics, this SIR model that sort of originally comes from her work with Ronald Ross. But she was also super, super, super devout. And she also sort of from the other side of the religious coin was like, yeah, math is how we communicate with God. She, she has a great, all these people are incredibly quotable. She says, you know, math is, the truth, the, th the things about mathematics, she's like, they're not the most important of God thoughts, but they're the only ones that we can know precisely. So she's like, this is the one place where we get to sort of see what God's thinking when we do 
mathematics. Again, not a fan of poetry or music. Some people will say Hendrix mm. is like, some Some people will say chapter one of that book is mathematics and then chapter two is like classic rock. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right? So like, it's not clear that the... I'm sorry, you just sent me off on a tangent just imagining like Erdish at a Hendrix concert, like trying to sort of figure out if it was from the book or not. <laughs> all I, but all I was, what I was coming to was just to say, but what Poincaré said about this is he's like, you know, if like this is all worked out in the language of the divine and if a divine being like came down and told it to us, we wouldn't be able to understand it. So it doesn't matter. So Poincaré was of the view that there were things that were sort of like inhumanly complex and that was how they really were. Our job is to figure out the things that are not like that. That are not like that.